talk about this firefighting system and you know this as a beginner again i'm going to repeat this we are dealing with the firefighting system designing not fire and safety so if you talk about this firefighting systems which can be used in case of fire in uh for the building protection these systems are classified into three categories you can read on screen the first is a fire suppression system simple the system which is used to control the fire comes under fire suppression for example a sprinkler system or the standpipe system or co2 system or in short for concept point of view the system which is used to control the fire comes under fire suppression following this yes sir uh, the next option here you see fire detection system the system which is used to detect the fire example like smoke detector heat detector beam detector flame detector these are few example for detection system including uh, this uh, addressable systems so the system which is used only to detect the fire that comes under detection system next we have fire indication system indication means which is used to indicate the fire the best example is what alarm and the alarm is used to indicate the fire so alarm system or different types of alarm comes under indication system and if you talk about this three uh, options in this the lengthy and major is a fire suppression and in this uh, the major system is a sprinkler system automatic sprinkler system the lengthy part types of fire and the fire protection system and equipment types of fire we'll discuss uh, with the fire triangle and at this level i'm going to ignore this but we'll talk about the systems and equipment and again if you are a beginner if you don't know anything about the system this topic for you i'll just show you the images for the different system first of all the list and the the just a simple image and some introduction related to the system so that later when when i start that particular system you can able to relate this okay so first of all you see type of protection system we can read in the list first is a fire extinguisher i'll show you the image second is a sprinkler system automatic sprinkler system the major and lengthy part of this uh, training program in the syllabus next the co2 system co2 system you'll find in the fire extinguisher also but here i'm talking about co2 system like total flooding or uh, local application next clean agent example fm200 similarly we have wet riser dry riser hydrant etc let me just show you some images to get the idea if you're a beginner this this will for you and i think everyone knows this portable fire extinguisher you can find in any hotel or hospital or a school it's a manual type portable fire extinguisher and the first system is about this portable fire extinguisher in fpa 10 after completing this basics we'll start this portable fire extinguisher only and fpa 10 and here is one example and in this you'll find different types all this type the more about this we'll discuss in an fpa 10 next sprinkler system you see automated sprinkler system here just i'll give you the idea the detail you'll find in nfpa 13 after completing nfpa 10 so here are the components you can find out the components here is a tank these are the pump sets in this one is a electric pump second one is a diesel pump here the diesel generator is not shown this is just example and one is one is a jockey pump at this level you may not aware of this type of pump don't worry we have a separate module for this nfpa 20 for pump next this main pipe we can call header after this main pipe this vertical pipe you can call riser and to which you'll find the horizontal pipe which will enter in the floor for example consider this as a ground floor suppose this is first floor and the riser will continue to the second floor and so on so the pipe which is entering in the floor the main pipe we can call cross main i'll i'll give you this you'll find in the notes also when we start this nfpa 13 hmm. at this level no need to write just try to get the idea about the system as a beginner if you are a beginner okay experience will be already aware of this system so this pipe is called cross main and the pipe which connect to the cross main is called branch or range pipe this cross main also known as distribution pipe and the branch pipe also known as range pipe to which sprinklers are connected and if you don't know what is sprinkler let me click quickly show you the image for the sprinkler you know this just for your confirmation you see the image of sprinkler on screen online you'll find in malls or in many locations in this also we have different types we have a tough topic to discuss uh, so why we are calling this sprinkler system as automatic first point here i'm talking about sprinkler system which is water based we have waterless system also i'm not talking about that i'm talking about water basis the sprinkler system water based and why we are calling automatic because this complete system or in this pipe the water in a pressurized form pressur means this complete network pressurized with the water and uh, with the zone control valve here 
this assembly this is called zone control valve assembly and here you will find uh, not clearly shown this we can call as uh, alarm check valve and we have a separate topic for this just i'm giving the idea okay so what happened if fire occurs somewhere here because of the heat the sprinkler thermal sensor as per the thermal sensitivity it will break how exactly we'll discuss don't worry just i'm just i'm giving the very basic idea hmm. when it's break what will happen this line is under pressure so water start flowing whenever start flowing whenever water start flowing this zone control valve valve assembly have that pressure switch it will give the signal to the control panel and the control panel will activate the pumps and the pumps will suck the water from the tank and supply on the affected area and this is just to get the idea the more in detail we'll discuss when we start this nfpa 14 module okay so this is a bottling sprinkler system and what i explained just now is a wet sprinkler system we have other systems also okay so this is called wet sprinkler yes, system uh, do you do you mm -hmm. say that in um, the pipes will be always loaded with water yes pipe is always with loaded with water and that's the reason this system this sprinkler system we can call wet sprinkler system in western countries okay. you'll find dry sprinkler system or we have two more pre-action or delic system that we'll discuss in nfp model okay. okay in general sprinkler system is generally we are talking about wet sprinkler system if you are talking about india or in gulf but in western countries we are generally we are using dry sprinkler system there is a reason that we'll discuss later okay next i think got the idea what is sprinkler system just over you next co2 system you see in this cylinder you'll find the co2 in the liquid form with the required pressure and all this all this uh, cylinders connected to the main pipe and this kind of connection we can call manifolds these are the flux pipes connected to the main pipe and this main pipe will run in the required space in the form of a nozzle and in case of in case of fire this solenoid valves these are the solenoid valves will open how exactly well, i'll explain in detail later and when we talk about nfp12 so these are uh, only used for electrical or uh, surveyor rooms uh, you see like uh, this comes under waterless system first point and this yeah. also comes under clean agent actually we have a separate model for this this is this will not find in nfp 2001 actually nfp 2001 is for clean agent but even this co2 also comes under actually it's a natural clean agent but we have a separate model nfp 12 and one more important point for the co2 co2 cannot be used in occupied areas can be used for not unoccupied areas like battery rooms or the equipment rooms without any uh, occupant because it's a toxic how it is toxic i will discuss as per the uh, this concentration percentage that we'll discuss in nfp 12 at this level is too early to discuss because many beginners not aware can of we this. use can we use in server room without any occupants yes if there is no occupants or is if there is a separate alarm so that the occupants can come out from that area yes but with occupancy we have fm 200 or we have other clean agents so this is a simple system so the co2 is used to control the fire because increasing the co2 level will decrease the oxygen and decreasing the oxygen level will reduce the combustion anyhow the basic of this uh, fire triangle we will discuss tonight only after completing this basic so this is also one option next fm 200 uh, this comes in a clean agent nothing but we are using a uh, synthetic gas as a mechanical you know refrigerant we're using this uh, hfc 227 ea refrigerant comes under halo uh, this halo carbons category hfc not halons and this also very effective but at the same time very expensive you see one example in case of fire this synthetic gas special gas which is with a very low temperature release in that area to control the fire and this comes and this also comes under clean agent and the clean agent means this can control the fire without disturbing or without damaging any equipment inside the space you see in the server room or in the record room or in the cache room if you use water based system uh, no doubt the the fire can control but the server will damage with the water so here we are using for for the equipment side especially most commonly the server room you'll find waterless system and the best example is a for clean agent is fm200 now in market we have energy and no waste different options are available 
with the different refrigerant but the concept is same next and this is used only for 10 seconds so it's very effective the more detail about this you will find in nfpa 2001 module okay next dry riser this i'm giving the terms and terminology so that when i start the topic the work will be easy for you and if you are a beginner this will be very useful so you are, you'll get the idea about the different system what we are going to deal with in this training program the next is a dry riser why we are calling dry riser dry riser can be a part of the sprinkler system can be a part of standpipe system or it can be a combined system part of combined system what is standpipe system sprinkler system combined system we'll discuss if you don't have the idea but at this level dry riser refers to the pipe without without water inside or without charging of water for example you see the red color device is called breaching inlet or simias or fire brigade connection to which when the fire brigade arrive on site with the tanker one end of the hose pipe they will connect to the tanker other end they can connect to this breaching inlet so that they can supply the water to this pipe till the time there is no water inside this that's the reason we, we can call this as a dry pipe or dry riser. So it's not an automatic sprinkler system? No, no, it's not an automatic. It's a manual type that too. There is no water. Again, in that we have different types. In that we have automatic dry, manual dry, automatic wet, semi-automatic, different options. We'll discuss at the time when we deal with NFPA 14. Okay. Sure. At this level, just what is dry riser? Dry riser means just concept point of view, the pipe without any water. Okay, we can call as a dry pipe or dry riser. Similarly, anyhow, at this level, you don't know about this landing valves, etc. We'll discuss later. Next, wet riser. Wet riser means the pipe with the water permanently charged with the water. Here you, here you see. The pump is connected to this vertical pipe and permanently charged with water. In case of fire, the pump can start and the water will be available at this outlet. And this outlet can be this um, this hose reel cabinet or it can be a landing valve or it can be connected sure. to the sprinkler system. So this pipe is permanently charged with the water. So we used to call wet riser or wet riser or wet system or wet pipe. Next. Excuse me. In what cases do we need to use the wet riser one? Mm, we have we have this conditions and we have a detailed topic for this. For example, you see this wet riser and dry riser is applicable for the sprinkler system as well as for the standpipe system. Standpipe system refers to hose reel and the landing valve. So we have different systems in sprinkler. As I said at the beginning, dry system. In the dry system, oh sorry, my mistake. Uh, in the sprinkler system, it can be combined with a standpipe or it can be only sprinkler system or else we have a standpipe system. Uh, again, in standpipe system, we have manual dry. Manual dry means there is no water and that system is installed to supply the water when the fire brigade are on site and even the inside in, in inside outlet also they will connect to the hose to control so in train firefighter will use that particular system okay anyhow at this level just i'm giving the idea the more about this you'll find in nfpa 14 module okay just at this level just some terms and terminology so that's so nfpa is, is that a code uh, nfpa is a society uh, what i cover in the previous class like uh, you know in plumbing ipc international wow. plumbing code similarly nfpa is the national fire protection association it's a society international based society deals with research and development for this firefighting system and in this training program i'm going to follow this nfpa but as per your location you must check the standard or the course so that you're going to get you're going to take the approval of your design from the authority in general yeah. we used to call aj authority having jurisdiction means the local authority okay yeah so as i said in the previous class focus on the concept because it is not possible in the class to cover all the location codes so i'm i'm, I'm just covering the initial international code nfp with ibc and some more so once you get the concept you can uh, customize or you can uh, relate with your local codes because numbers will be different but the concept is going to be same system is going to be same okay 
Yeah. Next, hydrant. This also one system. You see, here one example, which you can find outside the building. This comes under NFPA 24. I think this is outside the building. Mm -hmm. 